Welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a great week with your students and I hope you and your loved ones are well. This week, I thought a major focus should be on assessment because we're into distance learning for the long haul and it's time to start thinking about, okay, how can we actually get some grades into the grade book that actually count numerically towards the student's marking period grade? At this point, everything I've done with my students is formative and I have all those formative assessment grades in my grade book. I probably have about mm, eight or nine at this point. And so now I need to start thinking about what can I ask the students to do? What performance tasks could I ask the students to do that could get them to show me what they've learned? My rule of thumb at this point is if your students can Google it, if your students can look it up in a textbook, look it up in their notes or memorize it, at this point, these really aren't questions that you should be asking your students. So what does that look like, right? We're not in the classroom. What can I use in order to actually create that type of testing environment? Well, I think it really just comes down to having your students explain. And so the purpose of this video is to share some tech tools that I've used and show you some authentic assessments that I've given my students that enable them to explain the content and therefore let me know whether or not they understand it. Google Forms is the first way that I like to incorporate summative assessments into my classes. You can see that you can very easily incorporate some sort of picture. This is a hand-drawn um, model that I created for my students. And basically, I wanted my students to revise the model based on what they observed, and they can write their responses down below and provide some supporting details. Another one that you could do is give the students a picture of a phenomenon. So here's an example of the birthday candle phenomenon where I ask my students to use their knowledge of energy, light, and electrons to explain what's happening. And then finally, you could also import a video. And this is really good because we're in distance learning and have basically your students watch the video and provide some evidence that supports what they're claiming. The second tech tool I like to use in my class for authentic assessment is Flipgrid. Flipgrid allows you to post topics and has your students basically respond to them using video content. So you'll have a question stem or a video or a picture and your students can post right to this topic. And what I really like is the ease of use. I mean, honestly, all you have to do is type in your information. You can include a focus or a picture and then the students can actually respond to each other, which is kind of nice. So they can watch the videos and then respond and reply. And then of course, you can also include feedback. So if you look on the right hand side, it says create new rubric. You can edit what you want your students to talk about. And then if you want to put other things in there or modify it, you can just go right to custom feedback to change it. This final way incorporates actually a couple of tech tools. So here's a image of a phenomenon. I've got two solutions of copper two sulfate. And then here are some guiding questions and a space for the students to construct a model. I then have my students use Kami to create their models. And so you can see Kami will open right up. It'll open right up to the PDF. And then the students can use different um, uh, pictures and colors to create their model. Um, you can even highlight and annotate just like you see there. There are some guiding questions that I incorporated and basically I just wanted my students to focus on the similarities and differences between these two substances. But what I'm doing right now is I'm showing you how easy it is to um, basically have your students create models of these things. So you can see there's a, a superscript feature and then when I do the SO4 uh, you can see there's a subscript feature. So it makes it really simple. You can also copy and paste. Um, so it makes it easy for the ions to be put inside the different flasks. Um, and then you can see they're all creating their models with ease. It's really not that difficult. Um, and then you can create a particulate model just by simply drawing uh, circles around them like I did here. But it, it gives a lot of options for your students to incorporate some of their creativity. Now, after they do this and they create their model, I then wanted my students to screencast. And so next up, I'm gonna use Screencastify to have my students record and explain their models. A lot of my students chose to just basically answer the questions, specifically the guiding questions, and you can see that countdown tells them that they are already recording. So it was nice to hear them explain their models and answer the questions to consider because it helped me to know whether or not they know the information and it helped me to know um, the types of misconceptions that I'm seeing with all the different models. I hope this video helped you and gave you some inspiration as far as how you can incorporate some authentic assessment strategies into your classroom. If you have any questions about the tech tools or need some assistance, feel free to leave a comment down below, or you could also send me an email. 
Either way, I wish you another wonderful week of distance learning and thank you so much for watching.